Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolids at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this next match will be Dimefriend and Failthos on Wanderlust. Dimefriend going for the Shieldbot Factory right away, and Wanderlust... Sorry. Failthos going for the Cloakybot Factory. Wanderlust is not a player. Although that would actually be... Okay, that'd be a really cool game idea, an RTS game where the map itself is one of your enemies. Although I think that Warcraft 3 kind of did that, so... Like, okay, now Warcraft 3 did it with neutral units on the map, not the map terrain itself. That's a neat idea, now that I think about it. It's like you have map terrain that you're fighting as you're going through. Mm. Somehow I feel like that would just be frustrating. Oh well. At any rate, Field Thoughts going for Cloakabot Factory. Dying for it on... Well, opening much less aggressively with the shields. The opening glaives coming from Field Thoughts. A bit unusual with four glaives. Usually it's either two, five, or three. And in this case, we have four coming out here. I expect one will probably be used as a permanent scout in an area, while the other three will be used to raid the main base of Dimefriend. On the other hand, Dimefriend, with only two and a third in the production bandits, looks like both of them are just going to be used as forward scouts, not actually going to be rushing in to attack. I'm a bit surprised, in all honesty, that Dimefriend's not going for any dirtbags. Normally, that's what you see from a shieldbot player to scout out anything. Nope, just using the bandits, going forward with them. And... Yeah, the Glaive's still coming in. Four Glaives. This is going to be really risky. I don't see them managing to do a whole lot of damage. They are going for the Commander to some extent, but that's only because of convenience. So ultimately not managing to get a huge amount of information. They do know Dying Thrones going for Shieldbot Factory. They don't necessarily know much else, though luckily for them there's not much else to know. I mean, Dying Thrones just expanded a bit. And gone for Bandits. Failthos does not, however, know whether or not Dimefriend's expanded over to the south side of the map yet. They know that the north side hadn't yet been taken, but the south side, completely unknown. On the other hand, Failthos does have their north side exposed. Their south side, not so much, but their south side also isn't being expanded for. Oh, apparently... Apparently something is, is going wrong with pathfinding here. I'm not sure. There have been some complaints recently regarding that. I I figure that'll be resolved sooner rather than later. I'm assuming Hokomoko is still developing the engine. I think they were the ones working a lot on the pathfinding stuff, really improving it. At any rate, Dimefriend, despite their complaints, is actually still doing quite well in terms of attrition. They've still managed to maintain a 200% advantage right off the bat. It's a small advantage, given the fact that it's very early in the game. But it's there. It's not nothing. And... Gonna try to go for more of it, but Fieldthos already well aware that Dimefriend's there. Fieldthos has full radar coverage of this area, so yeah, these bandits are not a surprise. I'm a bit surprised there isn't any kind of two-pronged attack over to the north, though. Try to take out anything there. But nope, just the one prong, just over to the south. That is going to... Ooh, actually, ooh, that was that was nice. Fieldthos was paying attention, though, so Dimefriend could not completely bait out the glaives. But if Fieldthos hadn't been paying attention, that would have been several dead glaives. Good thinking, Dimefriend. At any rate, Dimefriend is, more importantly, managing to maintain strong control over the entire western side of the map, while at the same time making sure that one of the more common raid paths, this cliff right here, is not easily accessed by Filthas. Or at least they were. They're bandits now trying to go over to raid- to counter-raid the north? Really? That's across the entire map. Not sure what the logic is there, especially with another four bandits coming through, but it looks like- Oh, I think I see what's going on. Dimefriend- yeah, there's no concern here with the glaives. That's fine. They'll be taken care of. The idea is to bring all these bandits together to do the exact raid that Dimefriend was trying to prevent Fieldthos from doing to him. So, instead of protecting this southeast cliff, protect, or sorry, southwest cliff, attack the northeast cliff and go through the back that way. Clever, though it will be spotted relatively shortly. Or not, no, and even better, two-pronged attack. This is where the northern bandits are not moving. Why are they not moving? This is exactly what I expect to have happen. Except it's not. What I expect to have happen is the northern bandits would move in and attack the north side, while these bandits over here attack the south side and distract everything. There's the- there's another prong to the attack. This is perfect. These bandits need to get in position if they want to be able to deal any damage, but it doesn't look like that is what Dimefriend is doing. Dimefriend, no! You had a massive attack on your hands and didn't take it. I don't know why. At any rate, Dimefriend should be able to at least distract a little bit more I mean, most of Fieldthos' glaives are to the southern side, trying to attack a couple stray bandits. So the ones over to the north might be able to get some damage done. 
but it's not huge. Oh, Diamond Friend pointing out in chat, they have no APM. Okay, that makes sense. That is actually the main thing that APM is used for, is multitasking. I mean, 0k is set up so that you can kind of multitask somewhat without having to worry about your APM, but at high-level play, you've got to at least be able to tab between groups fairly rapidly. Like, between subgroups. Which, actually, I think you can do. There's a setting for that if you have your control group, where you, every time you hit the control group, it'll just cycle between subgroups based on how close they are. I don't believe it's default on, though. I also believe it's a camera-based setting, not a control group setting. It's a bit weird. Anyway, the point is, Failthos is able to attack in fairly strongly, but Dimefrain, with enough defenses, does manage to stop that from being a problem. At this point, the center being taken relatively evenly, Dimefrain with a bit more metal but less production, having nothing coming out of their shield bot factory. What is going on here, Dimefrain? Why do you not have stuff being built? I don't understand what's going on. This is why I always say repeat cues. Repeat cues are your friend. Repeat cues are the biggest friend in the world because they make you not excess as much. And as we can see, failed us, I think, is actually using repeat cues. Also getting Rockos because Rockos are good. Well, fairly good. Actually, at this point, Rockos. Well, with thugs on the field, that's not a bad idea. Also, with defenses being built up, with the Gauss turret being built up as well. What? Why are you going for a Gauss turret? That's a bit of an odd choice, considering that Gauss turrets are more anti-heavy and more for dealing with small corridors. This is not a small corridor. Anyway, with that set up, at least, it's something, I suppose. Oh, what the? Wait, what? Is that going through the ground? Yeah, it looks like it's going through the ground and somehow hitting the collision box of the stinger just out of range of the stinger. <laughs> and now Fieldhouse trying to do the same thing, but it doesn't work because the Gauss is a piercing weapon. <laughs> oh, Fieldhouse, or Diamond pointing out that the Gauss projectile is actually bouncing off the ground. Which is really difficult to see happen. I've got to be honest, that's not obvious. Okay, that... That was clever. That was a clever abuse of the physics system. That's like, not what Zero K is about, but it's always a fun little thing to have happen from time to time. Regardless, in that time frame, Fieldhouse did manage to get an economic advantage, did manage to rebuild most of their territory in the back, and did also manage to get everything set up so that they didn't have this issue with the Stinger being the most important thing in the world. But, at this point, though, they only have mostly Glaives. They have a few of the Rockos. This is exactly what I was talking about. They want the Rockos to make sure that they can deal with everything being sent out from Dying Freund, but they are not enough Rockos. Far from it. And with the Rogues coming out from Dying Freund, there's not much that can be done there. So Fieldhouse is probably going to go for more Glaives, possibly for Zeus as well. Not sure, though. They do have Hammers up, which is a little surprising. But, yeah, that's what they have up. At any rate, there are the glaives. That's the counter. Gets rid of the rogue. Gets rid of the rogues fairly easily. And now we have a big mixed force army from both Dimefriend and Failthos. So a lot of this is going to come down now to positioning, like targeting what units you need to target with the right units. And the bandits coming in, getting rid of the rockos, pretty much without any losses. This is proving very effective. Dimefriend able to push the south side, no problem. The north side still being pushed with proc or pork. Can't even say that right. But it is. Not the main story. The main story is the southern side and Fieldhoss being decreasingly able to maintain their presence there. Especially as the commander is somewhat trapped. And a bunch of rogues trying to do what they can to tear apart all the static defenses. At the very least, stopping most of the stuff from being relevant economically. Fieldhoss, however, managing to protect their base with just enough Rockos and a warrior to keep the bandits at bay. But of course, Dime Friends has been... They have been producing... Yes, they have been producing. So that's something. They have been producing. They have an economic advantage. They haven't used the entirety of their economic advantage, but they have it. It's there. So they at least have something to work with. And oh, Skazi pointing out the lack of ticks. Oh, that's that's a point. 
That is a fair point. However, that's actually an unfair point because outlaws are a thing, so ticks wouldn't be a great idea. For anyone wondering about ticks, they die once these outlaws get close. The bandits, yes, they would have encountered, that's a fair point, but at this point, it's kind of moot. I mean, we've got like 20 ish Rockos and a couple warriors. This is pretty much the counterforce. Any, any few bandits coming in would not do a great enough job. I mean, the racketeers, if they target the warriors and then a bunch of bandits come through, that could do the trick. And the roaches, that also makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot more sense than ticks would, because what is there to stop that? There's the warriors, and I guess if the roaches get unlucky, there's the Roccos trying to get through... What the heck is this one doing? You know, the Rocco, the roach could get lucky, or could not get lucky, in, as the case was there, and get hit by a warrior. But at this point, it's... Ooh, there's the Stinger Dine. At this point, it's going to be a bit of a rough time for Dime Friend to get in here. One of the Roaches does manage to get close. Only going to manage to take out a couple of Rockos in the process. Not terrible. But at the moment, Fieldhouse's commander is still relatively safe, and I don't think that's the linchpin to this strategy. I mean, Fieldhouse's commander is projecting a lot of pressure onto the southwest, so I can understand why you'd get rid of that. But at the same time, there's a lot of losses being incurred, and this entire force here from Fieldhouse is managing to do loads of damage. Just not by actually doing much to the commander. So Dimefriend's splitting the forces a bit in a way that's allowing Fieldhouse to take care of their of Dimefriend's commander, and also allowing Fieldhouse to take the entire center of the map. So Dimefriend's commander looks like they're about to go down. Are they about to go down? The answer is yes, they are about to go down. There they go. Taking out a bunch of rockers in the process, but that's still not enough. Fieldhouse should be able to rip apart the Gauss with the hammer coming in here. And the counterattack coming in from Dimefreund actually might be in a good position because it should be able to get behind everything that was sent forward to kill the commander. And it, the army is kind of split in half. Between the rogues and the thugs, the warriors aren't going to have much of a chance to getting through here. The problem, of course, being that the rockers are still a threat. But with the rogues, that should be able to counter that regardless. We do see some bandits coming up from Dying Frame. Not a whole lot of them, but some of them. Anyway, with... With this setup here that Fieldhouse has, looks like the Southwest is going to be taken, so Dying Frame will be slowly losing the Southwest if they're not careful. Even if they are careful, they're going to be slowly losing the Southwest. This is why I was saying, though. I think that's why they're going for Fieldhouse's commander, but I don't see that as being successful. And at this point, Fieldhouse is 3,000 metal ahead in terms of attrition. So there's not really a whole lot that Dime Frame has going for them right now. Managing to deal a bit of damage meaningfully, but it's not enough. At this point, I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing any switches. Fieldhouse is going for Firewalker, which makes perfect sense. There are a lot of defenses coming from Dime Frame. Dime Frame, however, not going for anything that would counter this. Like, I would say Thunderbird or maybe Phoenix. I think I can't remember if Phoenix is currently tuned to get rid of swarms of Rockos yet. Or Catapult, actually. I think Catapult would actually be a great idea in this concept, in this context. Fighting against all these Rockos. But I don't see any Strider... Oh, no, never mind. There is exactly is the Strider Hub. Okay, we have a Strider Hub. We're probably going to see Dante because nobody built Catapult first. I don't think a Dante is a great idea in this situation because Rockos, but no one built Catapult first. But at this point, it looks like Dimefriend managing to maintain a bit of a presence on the south side. The switch over to, fi to Firewalkers has actually left a bit of an opening. Dimefriend able to push in as Fieldhouse is not replenishing their Cloaky army as quickly as Dimefriend is replenishing their Shield army. That'll probably change in a second as this Dante is being, con being constructed. Now it's just a matter of Dimefriend maintaining pressure or maintaining their position against the pressure from Fieldhouse now that the Firewalkers up. And Dimefriend is building their Dante as well. So Fieldhouse basically has the opportunity for the next minute and a half or so, however long it takes for the Dante to be constructed, a minute or so. For the next minute, these Firewalkers are going to be providing enough pressure that Fieldhouse can push in possibly to Dimefriend's base. And that's basically the opportunity they have. If Fieldhouse can push it, they've got the game. If they can't push it within the next minute or so before the Dante is constructed, then Fieldhouse basically doesn't have that timing anymore. And at this point, the economic advantage has been dying for for a little while. It's small, and Fieldhouse is managing to re reclaim some of that. Mostly through reclaim. But, yeah, the money is going to the Dante. That's the thing. All of the money is going to the Dante. So the main force 
is having a hard time maintaining itself right now without reinforcements. Just needs to be careful. If that can, if that force can stay alive long enough, it should be able to counterattack. And also, oh, it's been split as well. So also the split to the north is doing a fine job keeping the northern side intact. As Fieldas has been trying to flank over to the north with a few hammers and a couple Zeus's. But the Dante should be done in six seconds. With that finished, we should see the south side break open. The center has actually been held pretty effectively. Dimefriend's managing to maintain that control, and that's what they need to do, which is perfect for them. So at this point, with the Dante up, going to the north side, which is a bit weaker, actually. That should force Philthos to try to take the north, but I think that Philthos is going to go for a counterattack, realizing the north is a bit too strong, but the south is wide open. I'm expecting Philthos will will pull south, go through here, and attack this southern expansion. They already have a bit of a fire base over in the south, metal extractors on the plateau. But no, going head on instead. Trying to break through the forces. I guess they now they see the Dante. They hadn't seen it before. They see it now, and that is going to be a problem. Spieltas now not maintaining as big of an attrition advantage, especially now with the Dante coming in, tearing apart all of their forces. And that thing only is worth about 2,000 metal, or 3,500 metal. So, I mean, it's going to be a big blow if it's lost, but it's not even close to being lost. So Feltos losing a lot of ground as a result. That opens up the south side to Dimefriend, and these rogues will probably be sent south to try to take care of the commander as much as possible, although the commander's already escaped from there. Wisely, I might add. And Feltos looks like they've been taking a bit of damage economically over to the south, but the main thing right now is their position has been lost, and I'm guessing they're going to go through the southern plateau, possibly straight into Dimefriend's base as a counterattack. But at this point, they are leaving their main base open. Getting a Scorpion, so good call. This gives Dimefriend about 30 seconds to come in and attack. If this Dante just walks in to the main base, that is going to be game. Failthos will, have, or will have nothing. And indeed, that's what's happening. There's only 25 minutes left. Sorry, 25 seconds left. <laughs> That'd be a terribly boring game if that was the case. 25 seconds left on the Scorpion, and it's been spotted. It's being torn to pieces. This Dante possibly sacrificing its own life in the process. This is a nice trap here as well. The rock is coming in here to take out the Dante as it's taking out the Scorpion. Bear in mind, all the metal here is going to be going towards Fieldthus as the Dante does go down. Takes out quite a lot in the process. Doesn't manage to take out the Strider Hub, unfortunately. Does manage to set everything on fire, which is nice in its own way. But at the same time, springing that trap opened up the entire south side to Dimefriend. Now, the only thing Fieldthus has right now is the Reclaim, which is substantial. I won't I'm not going to deny that. That's actually 2,500 metal worth of reclaim. But Dimefrank did stop the Scorpion, which would have completely shut down their entire army and opened everything up to Philthos. And with Dimefrank having a slight economic advantage, I still say that was the better move. At this point, though, going back to the Battle of the Sum over to the south side of the map, we do have... Or is it very done? Either way, really. We have... Dimefriend actually managing to push forward. There's not much coming from Feldos. Feldos is entirely relying on reinforcements. And while they do have the reclaim to work with, they don't have a huge amount of caretakers right now. I mean, they only have, well, they have 70 inch build power, which isn't bad. They can make use of that. But Dimefriend already has that basically same build power, as well as having a frontal position. Although they are spending a fair amount on the Dante, less so as last time. They have 20 going into shields, and the other 45 going into the Dante. So the majority of their funds are going to the Dante, it's worth noting. Which does open the timing up again for Fieldhouse. Fieldhouse with the Firewalker not managing to get a whole lot of damage done. That is possibly going to spell their doom. And if this southern firebase is destroyed, that's going to mean the entirety of the map up until the last third is under Dying Thorin's control. And that's what's happening. This entire section being destroyed, the Rack here is tearing apart, well... Stopping the Stingers, so allowing everything else to tear them apart. That being said, the Thugs are doing a fine enough job just tearing them apart by being there. You know, thugs are great for dealing with that stuff just because their shields take everything. And these don't have splash damage, so it doesn't matter. However, there's the Dante coming in from Fieldthos, so it's going to be Dante Wars in about six seconds. Dying Thrain setting up their own Dante, Fieldthos setting up their Dante. Dying Thrain with the Rogues on top of the Dante, however, which... That should do the difference. That will basically give it a dime for me. I think Fieldthus 
they have the units to deal with this. People are pointing out Skittles in the chat, which is pointing out the the idea that using a Scuttle would get rid of the Dante fairly quickly, assuming it doesn't get decloaked, which is a fair point. I haven't seen people use Scuttle a whole lot recently, though, and it looks like Fieldhouse is just trying to take advantage of the money they got from the Dante and Scorpion loss, because Fieldhouse is maintaining parity just by having that reclaim in their main base. If it weren't for that reclaim, that's... We probably wouldn't see as many Dantes. I still agree with getting rid of the Scorpion when it was gotten rid of. But it is going to be an uphill battle. The Rogues being here, that'll help the Dante's chances. And Field Thoughts, now that the Reclaim is uh, still there, it's still got a few thousand metal left in Reclaim. Yeah, still got a thousand metal left for Reclaim. So there's still another third of a Dante. But Dimefrain's got a lot going for them as far as their damage potential. I mean, the Dante versus Dante war directly is going to be massively favored towards Dimefrain. If no other reason than the Racketeers, but on top of that, there's rogues. And if anything tries to get rid of the Dante here, the felons will get rid of any light units coming forward. Not that I imagine they will, given that all the fires on the ground would burn them. All the fire on the ground. There's so much fire. And at this point, Fieldthos now focusing quite a bit more on keeping their mainline army going, not as much on the Dante, so the second Dante might not even be constructed before Dimefrain managed to get into the main base, and that is exactly what's happening. Dimefrain should be able to tear apart the production infrastructure here, but they're going to lose another Dante if they're not careful. I don't know where the constructors are, if any. I don't actually see any convicts in the front lines. That's... Oh, there it is. There's one. Managing to reclaim some stuff. It's more a matter of repair than reclaim. Still, this position for Dying Throne is quite impressive. I'm a bit surprised Fieldthus has actually maintained their position as long as they have, but this is... this is a tough place to come back from. I understand the idea of the Dante. I can see why they're going for that. It's very typical, it's cheap, it, it's a strong frontline unit. It manages to push quite well. Just considering what they're fighting against, I'm not sure. I would almost... I don't want to say catapult, because that's not a great idea either. I can see the scorpion. That actually made a lot of sense. And at this point, Dimefrain flanking on top of that. I was going to say maybe fail thoughts or should think flanking, but flanking wouldn't work for them right now. They don't have the resources to do so. They have the two Dantes, and that's about it for their fighting force. Dimefrain, on the other hand, not going for more striders. Just building up as much of a solid ground army as they can. At any rate... This this flank here will probably spell doom. At this point, Fieldhouse has to split their forces, and it's heavyweight forces. They don't have a lot of splitting they can do. And the Dante to the south, one of the Dantes, the less damaged Dante, now getting completely stunned out. Nothing can really be done to help it out here. And the one being repaired, well, it's not getting stunned out yet, but basically Fieldhouse has nothing to work with. Their heavyweight units aren't doing them any good. Their lightweight units will be torn to pieces by the Outlaws and the Dante and the Felon. I'm not sure what they could really build other than trying to grind it out with a bunch of Roccos and hope for the best. And indeed, they're going for a Scorpion. That is their option. That is their Hail Mary pass. Get that Scorpion built. That is it. They can get that built. That'll get rid of the shield pretty effectively. I mean, the EMP will work. It's just a question of whether or not that gets built. Because right now, Dimefrain's just biding their time, finding the right timing to push in. And I'm pretty sure that'll be sometime within the next minute and a half, on top of them getting their own Scorpion. So, this is... Man, how would you come back from this? Oh, yeah, Skazi pointing out the Scuttle. Of course, there is always the Scuttle option. It's expensive, 550, but it deals like 8,000 damage. So there is the scuttle option. There's also the degun fire option, but that only gets rid of a couple of felons. And a few, okay, actually, it gets rid of a lot. Come to think of it, doesn't get rid of any of the racketeers though. And field toss's commander coming up. Other oh, heavy fire, losing one of the Dantes. The second Dante will probably go down in a second. And field toss's commander running away while burning. Doesn't have much of a shot either at this. So field toss about to lose the commander. There it goes. And the southeast side is completely destroyed. This is. This is it. Field Thoughts coming with the Scorpion, that last shot. Manages actually to get rid of one of the Dantes. 
This Dante has no way out from here. So, there's that. There is that scorpion. However, there's also a bunch of racketeers, which will stun that out too. And the flanking attack is still ongoing. But Field Thoughts managing to maintain control over that as well. Once again, though, Dying Friend already ahead of them. Already with their own Scorpion, there's not a whole lot I can think of that's gonna make that make a difference. And there's the stuns on the Convicts. Pretty much just operating as cannon fodder. I guess they were there to repair the Dante, but even then, not managing to do a whole lot before they just get out of there. But the Scorpion not managing to do a whole lot before the Convicts get out. And the northern flank is still doing its job. Still distracting Fieldhouse's forces, still splitting them up and stopping the southern side from being completely overrun now that there's not much there other than a cloaked scorpion, a handful of racketeers, and a bunch of convicts. Which surprisingly aren't building up a bunch of defenses. I don't I did not expect that. Dime friend has been building defenses everywhere. I'm really surprised they aren't just establishing a fire base of like Gauss turrets and stingers and Faradays and other things that would maintain a strong frontal presence using defenses and force Fieldhouse to spend even more money trying to break through static defenses. But yeah, that is it. Failthos looks like they're going to throw in the towel. Are Failthos going to throw in the towel? Probably going to throw in the towel. Their own Scorpion, the last thing remaining that's anywhere near the fighting potential. And that is it. Failthos throws in the towel, Dying Frame taking it. And that was a fairly even game overall. I mean... Once the Striders came up, it started to become a little bit less even. But yeah, the metal income was about the same. The reclaim... A lot of it went to field house near the end, thanks to that destruction, but I still agree with that attack. I mean, getting rid of the Scorpion early, that helped Dime for insecure position. Yes, they did donate a Dante's worth of metal. On top of the, between the Scorpion and their own Dante, there was a Dante's worth of metal there. But overall, that was still worth it. Just because it kept the kept Field Thoughts from getting out of there. And yeah, that was the other thing. With the Firewalker change. That wasn't a bad idea, but the lack of units in the front line as a result, the lack of reinforcements from the money being shifted over to jump bots, that gave Dime Friend a massive opportunity to push forward. And after that, well, that was it. Like, after that, it was just a matter of Dime Friend pushing forward and managing to maintain pressure until getting the final blow with the Scorpion. I'm a bit surprised we didn't see the Scuttles, though, now that I think about it. Yeah, they had the jump bot factory. We went through all the trouble to get that. Anyway. So that was that. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to be going one last game tonight, which is going to be a game between Dying Freund and Lamadeus on Eye of Horus, which we haven't seen in a while. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.